We receive the breakthrough, Lord. We receive the breakthrough, Lord. We receive the breakthrough, Lord. In the name of Jesus, 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 we receive it, Lord. We receive it, Lord. We receive it, Lord. Come on, somebody receive it right now. We receive it, receive it, receive it. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He's able. He's able. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, be shaken, somebody. Come on, be shaken. Be shaken. Be stirred. Oh. Oh. Mm, ah, yeah, 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 cool. Thank you, God. Come on, why don't we lift our hands together? Come on, why don't we lift our hands together? Come on, everybody. Come on, let's stand up on our feet today. And let's lift up our hands and our voices together. Let's magnify the one who is able. When man can't do it, uh, God can do it. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, when you can't fix it, uh, God can fix it. Hakorobosa. Uh, when, when you aren't able, when you are falling out, when you are tired, uh, when you are weak and weary, hallelujah, the Bible said uh, that God uh, take, takes up wings as an eagle, uh, and there is healing in his wings. Uh, there is healing for you and me today. Praise God. And there's a breakthrough for the people of God. There's a breakthrough for our city. There's a breakthrough in your home. Y'all don't believe that because I heard one amen on the front row here. <laughs> There's a breakthrough in your home. Come on, I want you to say amen like you actually believe that. There's a breakthrough in your homes. There's a breakthrough in your neighborhoods. There's a breakthrough on your jobs. There's a breakthrough in our cities where sin doth abound. Grace doth much more abound. He's still able to clean us. He's still able to deliver. He's still able to make whole. He's still able to fill with the Holy Ghost and power. I wish I had a church that believed that. I wish I had an apostolic church that actually believed that. That would declare that in the atmosphere. That wouldn't be scared to lift up your voice and declare this stuff in the atmosphere. We got a whole lot of people in our world declaring a whole lot of stuff in our atmosphere. Where is the people of God? Where is the church of God? Where are the apostolics uh, that will lift up their voice and not just say, well, I'm praying in my head. That don't work. That only works for you. You need to lift up your voice and speak into the atmosphere. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living. Ooh, I'm excited to be in his house today. Amen. Praise God. But see, I'm not I'm not excited to be here for the for the for, because this is this is us having church. I'm excited to be here because I've come again another week to the barn house to sharpen up my tools so that I can go out into the field and be his representative in the earth. Hello, somebody. Come on. That's why we gather. Yes. We gather to be sharpened by the word. We gather to lift his name up together. Praise God. The, the psalmist said, oh, magnify the Lord. Y'all don't know the, the Bible. Oh, magnify the Lord. I only heard Brother Shane. Oh, magnify the Lord. Okay, just checking if you still got your voice box. Praise God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. That, that, that denotes that there are other people around doing it together. And that's why we gather. 
because there's something about magnifying him with me that is different than magnifying him alone. Praise God. My magnification of him alone can only take me so far. But when I get together with the body, when I lock arms with the saints of the living God, there is something released in the unity of the body that cannot be released when you are alone. So that is why we gather. Hello. That is why we gather. Hello, anybody out there? That is why we gather. Hallelujah. We're going to get sharpened. We're going to get fueled up. We're going to get ready to go out into the field and be the light that God has called us to be. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. If you're joining in on live stream today, I want to thank you for joining, and I pray the word of God blesses you today. Amen. Uh, let me just mention a couple of things, follow up with what Sister Georgia was saying earlier about uh, us going out to the streets every other, uh, every other week. That would be the first and third weekend, either a Saturday or Sunday, but it will be the first and third of every month, first and third weekend, okay? Now, we're not going to make this announcement every week, okay? You, you, now you know what's going on. If you're interested in joining us any of those weeks, you got our phone numbers, you know how to reach us. Um, and, and so you can do that. Praise God. You don't have to wonder whether it's happening or not. If something's not happening, if, if for some reason her and I can't go out and do these things like what we did today, then is when we'll send out a message. But other than that, if you don't hear anything, first and third of every single month, we are going. We're not going to be locked up in a building. We're not going to be locked up in our houses. If 10,000s of people can get together and be shoulder to shoulder in protest, then we can go and we can do some stuff too. Yeah. Praise God. This ain't no pressure on anybody. But you know, you know how to reach us. Me and my wife will, will be going somewhere every, every first and third of the month. Uh, sometimes we'll probably be going every week, but it's a sure thing that it's the first and third. And if it's not happening, then we will send out a message. Praise God. But we're going to be the church. Amen. And I don't care if anybody else wants to get on board with that. I'm going to do what God called me to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is what's right and pleasing in the sight of the Lord. Oh, y'all don't believe that either, do you? This is what's right and pleasing in the sight of the Lord. Amen. And this doesn't negate any other personal, uh, uh, you know, day to day uh, representative type uh, approach you take in your day to day life. Every single day we are called to shine as lights and go. Amen. Amen. But officially, as a body, as Keystone Church body, we have selected first and third of every month to do something as a body. Praise God. And so if you're interested, uh, you, can, you can hit us up, call us, text us, whatever, and we'll let you know what's going on. Okay? Praise God. I was, I was um, as Sister Georgia also mentioned, we were so, we were so, uh, Boy, I can't even find the word to describe uh, what we saw downtown. But not only that, um, how many people there are that simply just need an apostolic witness. The fields are white for harvest. And some of us in here may not care that much about the harvest. And if that's the case, I'm not really sure what Jesus you're serving. It's not the Jesus of the Bible. But Jesus cares about the field. <laughs> Jesus bled and died for the field. He said, I came to seek and save that which was lost. He said, look unto the fields. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pray not for the harvest. It's plenteous. It's my laborers that are few. And he, and he gave a, 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 a sound rebuke to the Laodicean church in Revelation chapter 3. He said, look, look at you. You're rich and you're fat and you're increased with goods and, and you're living the American dream. And while my field is out there and, and it, no one's there to harvest the crops, no one's there to, to, to intercede over the crops. And, and God is saying in this hour, awaken intercessors. Awaken, intercessors. Awaken out of slumber. Awaken out of sleep. Awaken out of complacency. 
Awaken out of contentment. Awaken out of excuse making. Awaken out of self-righteousness. Awaken out of selfishness. Awaken, O oh thou that sleepest. Awaken. Awaken. Hallelujah. Awaken. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, I did not have a, a rhema word from the Lord to share today. But as I was walking up here from out of uh, that room over there to the side, the Lord just said, he just said something to me. He said, who are my representatives? Who are my representatives? And so with not many notes at all, not much time to really go over anything, I'm just going to talk to you about that a little bit. I'm going to talk to you about his representatives. Praise God. Amen. So let's pray, and then, I, and then I'll have us open up our, our, our Bibles, and we can uh, look to some scripture. But I just want to pray one more time here. And let's do this. Why don't we stand together? And we're going we're gonna to we're gonna shatter the atmosphere with prayer right now. Yeah. And I want our hearts to be open to the word of God. Oreta sosevekenda murobokotos. Mekantu rebebe sosakai yahata. El esa da akulomokenta. Farobotsondo hokorepa. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the authority of the word of God. I bind and tear down every anti-Christ spirit. Shiko rabahataya rabahaya. Where sin doth abound, grace doth much more abound. Lord, it is still the Acts 238 message that is the antidote for this world today. And I declare that message to go out into our world, into our streets, into our neighborhoods, into our homes, into our schools, so that our world and our nation can know what it is to be healed and made whole. In the name of Jesus. We receive the word, whatever it is today. I'm just a conduit, Lord, I'm just a vessel. Help us all today. Enlighten us and strengthen us in your word, oh God. Order our steps. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, I'm going to read from uh, John chapter number 20. Uh, and we're going to begin at verse number 19. Praise God. Amen. Let me wait for my iPad to get in sync here. Praise God. Amen. Come on, iPad. Somebody shout, come on, iPad. Come on, iPad. <laughs> That's why you don't depend on technology, you know. Praise God. Amen. Here we are. Verse number 19 of John chapter number 20 says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Why don't you say that to one another? Point to somebody around you. Come on, do it with me. Say, Peace be unto you. Praise God. Now this time say it like you mean that. Peace be unto you. Praise God. That's what Jesus told the disciples who were trembling in fear. Uh, and then verse number 20 says, and when he said, when he had said, uh, so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad and when they saw the Lord. 
Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. Come on, say it to your neighbor again. Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Why don't you say that to your neighbor as well? Say, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Verse number 23, last passage. Whosoever sins ye remit, this is what he's giving them instructions. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted. And on, on to them, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Praise the Lord. Uh, there's something interesting that takes place in this passage, these passages of scriptures here. Um, Jesus had just risen from the dead, and he is now showing himself alive to his disciples. And his disciples are in an upper room somewhere, probably likely the same upper room uh, where the Holy Ghost was first poured out. But this time, they aren't there with boldness. They aren't there expectantly. They aren't there with, uh, with hope for what is to come. This time, they are there in the upper room, mind you, full of fear. Full of fear. Uh, they are locked away in their homes. They are locked away in a safe place, so they think. <laughs> and and they, they, they are crippled. They are crippled with fear. And Jesus, Jesus steps into the room. Praise God. And uh, at this point, he, 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 he had received his glorified body already. Right. So Jesus, while he, while, he has a, while he does have a physical body now, it is a glorified body. It, this, this is really a... a, a uh, confirmation, if you will, or a, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? My, my mind is slipping here. Um, a fulfillment. There you go. This is really a fulfillment of what Jesus prayed in, in the garden right before his passion, before he uh, died for us in John chapter 17. He said, Father, glorify me now as with the glory I had before time. And so Jesus went through this crucifixion, uh, this death, this burial, and then he rose again the third day with a glorified body. Now, the Apostle John, uh, in his epistle, 1 John chapter 3, he talks about how uh, that when we see the Lord, we're going to be like unto his glorious body. When Christ returns, and this is the blessed hope, really. This is the hope that we have. This is the hope that transcends any hope, uh, any desire that we may have in this life. Because this blessed hope of becoming like Jesus Christ is greater than any hope in this life. And so that's why I, I'm not, I, I'm not, I don't really too much understand a Christian, uh, especially an apostolic Christian, who allows the burdens and the cares of this life to so trouble them uh, that they forget, first of all, where God brought them from. But second of all, they forget, or at least they are forgetting, where, they, where they're going. Praise God. God, may ha God. God started a process, right? He brought us from out of the miry clay. He set us on our, on, on our feet to stand, right? But it doesn't stop there. God has a continued journey for us, and the ultimate destination, if we'll endure to the end, is to be like him. Praise God. And, and, it, and it doth not appear what we shall be, John said. But he goes on to say, 
we do know this, that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Praise God. And so I say all that to say that when Jesus stepped into that room where the disciples were trembling with fear because of what was going on at the time, praise God, he stepped in and brought about peace. That's why he said, peace be unto you. And then he had to reiterate that a second time. And he said it again. I say again, peace be unto you. The difficulty is this, and, and I pray you I pray y'all hear me today. The difficulty is this. It's hard to have peace when we don't allow the peace maker or the peace giver into the room. Right. Praise God. It's even harder to have peace when we don't even perceive that the peace giver is in the room. At first, they didn't recognize who, this, who, who, who was standing before them. But when they recognized, Jesus said again, peace be unto you. Praise God. You know what peace is, according to Scripture? Peace is actually, and this is, this is quite interesting, peace is actually the Greek word Irene. <laughs> we have a sister Irene here. Praise God. It's, it's amazing to me. Um, and so when God brought me to that, to that word, and then I saw what the Greek word meant, I said, boy, this must be for this body today because there has to be a peace. That Greek word literally translates to this, a total sense of tranquility, harmony among brothers and sisters. Praise God. An unshaken resolve about the world around you. Can you say that with me? Say that. An unshaken resolve about the world around you. That means when you have the peace that Jesus offers, circumstances cannot shake you. Dilemmas cannot tear you down. Disagreements uh, cannot make you throw up your hands and give up. Praise God. When you have the peace that God offers, when you have the prince of peace, that word prince simply means the originator and the author of peace. When you have a hold of that, there is nothing around you that can trouble you. And what do we mean by being troubled? Because I think, I think a lot of us, if we got into a room and talked about what troubled us, there'd be, a, there'd be a varying of answers there. But when we're talking about troubled, being troubled simply means this. If it causes you to retreat from your call in Christ Jesus to any degree, you're troubled. Something's troubling you. If it causes you to slip in your faithfulness, your commitment to the kingdom, uh, your boldness, your willingness to be his representative in the world, then something is troubling you and disturbing your peace. It's that simple. It doesn't have to be something grand. It doesn't have to be something that made 11 Alive news or breaking news. It doesn't have to be a death in the family or, or anything like that. It can be something so extremely tiny. But if it shakes your resolve in the Lord, if it causes your mind to forget, wait a minute, my blessed hope and assurance is something that transcends this world and this life, then my friends, peace has taken a back seat. Peace has lost its grip on you. Praise God. Amen. Um, Philippians chapter number four, verse number eight, tells us that whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any praise, if there be any virtue, the Bible says, listen to this, 
It says to think on these things. Now, here's the deal. A lot of us, a lot of us have struggled to have peace, whether it is in our personal lives, our personal home, or just with things going on around the world because of our thought life. Somebody shout thought life. Your thought life is extremely important when it comes to having peace. It matters what you are meditating on. It matters what you're thinking about. It matters what you are giving attention to up here. It matters because we'll, on the one hand, we'll say, Lord, I just want peace and I just want everything to work out, and I just want everything and everyone to be okay. But then on the other hand, our, th our thoughts are pessimistic, our thoughts are negative, our thoughts are full of fear, our thoughts are trying to figure out how the problem can be fixed. And we do that more than we get on our knees, and that's a metaphorical term. You don't always have to be on your knees to pray. But we do those things more than we get on our knees before the Lord and say, Lord, you told me by your word that I don't have to be afraid. So I'm asking you, give me, bestow upon me, impart to me whatever it is, whatever grand uh, supernatural thing I need in order for peace to be restored in my life, in my home, in my family, in my marriage, in my city, on my job, in my world. Peace is what God wants to give you and I. Peace. Peace. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's some disciples that were on a boat one time and there was a storm raging. And Jesus was on the boat, but he wasn't hanging out with the disciples while they were dealing with the storm. He was in the the what do they call it, the, the bow or, or I forget what it is, uh, some compartment of the ship. And the Bible said he was asleep. Some of us, we may feel like that sometimes, like Jesus is asleep in the midst of our storm. Jesus is just snoring away while we're just kind of trying to keep the ship balanced and uh, trying to steady the, 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 uh, the y'all help me out here. What is that thing? The sail, steady the sail. Uh, while we're busy trying to do all of that and we're looking for some deliverance, Jesus is just catching Z's and counting sheep. Praise God. But the funny thing is, he is the sheep, so what is he doing? Counting himself? Praise God. Okay, y'all missed that one. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> but that's how it feels sometimes. And um, here's, the, here's the deal. The reason why it feels like that, and the Holy Ghost dropped this on me and helped me to understand this concerning this passage. Jesus was asleep Number one, because he wasn't afraid of the storm because he has control over the storm. But the other reason he was asleep is because the, the disciples were trying to figure out the storm on their own. And they waited till the storm got crazy until they called out for Jesus. So if we're going to try to handle it ourselves, guess what Jesus is going to do? And then when the thing gets out of hand, then we want to yell for Jesus. And that's okay, but see, we could have avoided the rougher storms if we would have called for him when it was not so rough. When it just started. And so what we, <laughs> what we have to understand is that really Jesus never slumbers or sleeps. So it's really just a metaphor. I mean, his, when he was in the flesh, of course, his body got tired and he slept. But the God that we serve, God is a spirit. Remember, he doesn't slumber or sleep. But in a proverbial sense, it may seem like he's asleep. Why? Because we're trying to go at it on our own. 
And then there's, the, boy, I'm totally not even talking about what I had wrote down earlier. It's just amazing to me. Praise God. But, but here, here's the deal. We, we, uh, sometimes we may think, well, no, no, I'm, 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 I'm asking Jesus to help me. I had to help somebody with, th- somebody with this yesterday who, uh, who reached out to me and was just telling me some things that were going on. And I had to tell them, listen, um, they said, you know, God won't deliver me. God won't heal me of my hurts and my pains. God is just not healing me. And so I'm angry and I'm hurt and I'm just mad and, and I'm, a, I, I'm just a big mess. And I said, well, that's interesting because here's the deal. Here's what the Lord is, 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 is prompting me to share with you. See, the problem is it's not that God is unwilling to heal your heart, your soul, your emotions, your relationships. The problem is, is that we want him to do the healing and the deliverance our way. We want him to follow the plan that we wrote out. And we say, Lord, I need you to heal. I need you to help. But here's how I'm asking you to do it. And then God is left with his hands tied because he's like, well, I'm God and I know what's best for you, whether you think I do or not. And I'm unwilling to do it your way, because if I do it your way and it gets worse, you're going to blame me. You're going to say, God, uh, what happened? God, please, can you get me out of this one now? Because that plan clearly didn't work. And God is just, you know, I have these conversations with him all the time. He's like, well, if you would have just allowed me to do it the way that I plan to do it and wait on the Lord, then it would not be where it is now. The storm wouldn't be as rough. The wind wouldn't be as crazy. The waters wouldn't be as out of control as they are right now. But because we tried it first on our own. See, God does not want to be the last resort. He he doesn't want to be the last resort. Hello? Hello? He wants to be the first responder. You know how we call 911 and and they're the first responders, right? And we appreciate that, praise God. But God wants to be the first responder. Because guess what? A 911 call can't fix your internal issues. And a lot of times we put band-aids on internal bleeding. I think y'all missed that. A lot of times we put band-aids on on internal bleeding. True. Then we wonder why we're still bleeding. My Lord. Praise God. We need the spirit of peace. Yes, sir. In fact, I wonder if we'll lift up our voice and ask God for peace right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, with, with, with a spirit of sincerity, with a spirit of desire. Pray for yourself, pray for your neighbor, pray for your spouse. Pray for those watching online. Come on, let the spirit of peace flow. Let the spirit of peace flow. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in our world. And uh, if we're not careful, we, we, we can... <laughs> we, I talked about SpongeBob last week. I'm going to talk about SpongeBob again. We can get like, y'all remember Patrick? We can get like Patrick and be under that rock, scared of everything. Right? If we're not careful. See, I like SpongeBob and Sally. Y'all remember Sally, the one with the, the helmet on? What, what is it, a fishbowl? I like them too. Because you know what? They're bold. S- Sally, you know, I think that's her name. Sally, she, she's just a little squirrel. She can't really do much, but she'll, she'll go and take on every big Goliath in the sea. Why? 
because something about her, there's something, that was, there's something in her that just had this peace about, about the fact that it, it's going to get done. I, I, because fear, it, it's worse. To, it's, I'd rather go out in the battle and get some wounds than to live under my rock and be full of fear. Hello? All right. Praise God. You know, if, if David, uh, young David, if he would have taken, think about this. If he would have taken the shield and the sword of Saul and went out into the battle with those things, I'm here to tell you today he would have lost. Right. He would have lost. But, but here's, here's the revelation in that story. My God. Here's the revelation in that story. David had two options. Somebody say two options. David had two options. The one option was to use what man could provide for him. Shake your head, yes. <laughs> that was the one option. He, he had the one option to use what man could produce. To utilize the efforts of human flesh and put on shield and sword and go out into the battle. But he recognized that, David recognized that the name of the Lord is greater and more powerful than shield, sword, and Goliath. Because he said, I come not to you with Shield and sword. Boy, we we got to do a Bible study or something. This is. <laughs> we uh, he said, I come not to you with shield and sword, but I come to you, Goliath, in the name of the Lord. I don't need to put on physical human armor. I need the armor of the Lord. Praise God. I need the name of the Lord because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are safe. Praise God. This is so important. This is so important. Um, my God. There, there's something that happened earlier this week. Well, just yesterday, actually. I was um, on the phone with a friend that called me to pray for them concerning an issue going on, uh, some health issue going on in, in, um, with, with his wife. Okay? And uh, for some reason, uh, he decided to call me. I don't know if the Lord put me on his heart, but nonetheless, he called me. We hadn't talked in a long, long time. And, uh, and well, first of all, he texted me because I was sitting at my desk at work and I couldn't really talk on the phone. So he texted me and told me what was happening. And he texted me, you know, I'm not going to get into the details, but he texted me uh, what was going on. And immediately I stopped, I left my desk, I took a 15 minute break, I went to my vehicle, and I began to intercede and call things that be not as though they were. Why? Because I am full of the Holy Ghost and fire. Yes. And the apostolic church at large is forgetting what we're filled with. All right. We get so excited, I got the Holy Ghost, I speak with tongues. But wait a minute, what is all that for though? So that we can shout about it on Sundays and tell each other we got it? God said, I gave you the Holy Ghost so you could be my witnesses. Praise God. And so, uh, to my knowledge, this, this friend you know, doesn't um, believe like, like we do. Uh, and uh, so anyway, I, I went to my vehicle and I began to call, call forth the miracle. And I texted my wife and asked her to uh, stop what she was doing, unless it was an emergency, and begin praying as well. And we, we prayed. We prayed for about five, ten minutes. We commanded things to be healed and made whole. And this was about, uh, goodness, maybe about 12 p.m. or so uh, on a Friday. And when we got home, uh, my friend called me again at around five or six, and he said, I can't, I can't believe this. 
I, I, I can, but I can't because it almost, it, it's, it's actually really impossible because they had done two tests on his wife prior. Both the tests came back negative or, excuse me, positive for whatever the issue was, if that makes sense. Um, I'm trying to avoid the details, okay? Uh, the, the two tests came back positive, which revealed that she had the issue, okay? And this issue would cause her not to be able to bear children, okay? And so, and so uh, he, he called me and he said, I, I, this, is, this is unbelievable because the doctor just called me and told me that this last and third test came back negative. And so that means she was completely healed in five minutes from what she was dealing with for years. Do you understand the God that you serve and the power that is within you and within me? It's not just so we can say, oh, I got the Holy Ghost on a Sunday service. It's so that we can go out there and be representatives of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, as my father sent me, so send I you. And that's the clarion call to the church in this hour. We've had enough of, of, of the of the, well, I hope they come to us. Well, I hope they come to our church buildings. No, I'm, I thank God for church buildings. We need them. They play a vital role. I thank God for church services. We need them. They play a vital role. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, even the more as you see the day approaching, the day of the Lord approaching. Praise God. They're vital. They're important. But if it's the only element where we know how to engage with, then we are not. I don't know what. Oh, there it is. Uh, then we are not totally the church. Praise God. Amen. If we're missing any element of his church, then we're not his church. Is that fair to say? If he said upon this rock. I'm going to build my church. If he used the word my church, that means he's distinguishing his church from all other churches that may call themselves churches. Right. That means there are some distinctions that separate the two. Praise God. We, we've got, as the apostolic church, we've got a lot of the main distinctions. We do. Boy, we've got the doctrine. We've got you must repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. We've got you must be born of water and of the Spirit. We've got uh, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. But sometimes we forget that that same passage says, follow peace and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Oh, we love to tout about the holiness part, but no one really preaches on the peace part. Praise God. That means I'm not going to see the Lord if I don't have peace. Do you believe the Bible or no? So that means if I don't get a hold of my fears and my unreasonable concerns, you can sit on an apostolic pew for 20 years and praise God your whole life and still be lost because you refuse to let the Prince of Peace put peace in your life no matter what's going on. I don't care how scary it seems. I don't care how, how, much, uh, I don't care how much the media talks about it. Doesn't matter. You know why? Because government, media, uh, presidents, kings, priests, whatever, whoever. They are not God. They may think they're God, but I've come to declare to them today, they are not God. There is one God who is above all, through all, and in all. And his name is Jesus. Amen. 
and he's the Prince of Peace. He said, peace I give you. Not as this world gives, but as my Father gives, I give you. That means there's a distinction between worldly peace and heavenly peace. If we're not careful, we can be deceived by the peace that we think we have. See, we can make up our own peace and think it's peace. We can say, well, I, you know, I'm just not going, I'm just not going to do this. I'm not just not going to go there. I'm just not going to talk to that person. I'm just going to, I'm just not, I'm just going to make my own peace. No, you can have quietness, but that doesn't mean it's peace. I need somebody to receive that. You can have quietness, but it's not peace. Peace has to do with what's going on in here and in here. That's what this world does not have. They don't have that. The church ought to have that. Because if we don't have that as well, then who is the world going to look to? What hope can we offer if we don't even have peace? Hello? Hello? What hope can we offer? And is that why we feel so intimidated to, to, to share with people uh, the Jesus we have, the Jesus we know, share with people our testimony, share with people the gospel, go about and be a light in our world and not be so concerned with cursory problems? Is that why we feel intimidated? Because really, we're not even sure if we have the peace that we're, that we're going to try to tell somebody about. Hello, can I just be real? If I'm not even sure that I have the peace that I'm wanting to share with my neighbor, then it's very likely that I'm not going to be willing to share it because I really don't have it. And I want to fool my fellow brothers and sisters and make them think I'm good when really at home I'm a mess. This is, this is, see, not every preacher going to stand behind the pulpit and talk about stuff like this. They're just going to tell you, well, God wants you to be rich. God wants you to have that car. God, come on. People are hurting in here. People got problems in here. And listen, no amount of money can buy peace. No amount of money. And that's why there are folks that have, that have lived, that had multiplied billions in the bank. And this is what they did. Why? If money brings everything you need, why do so many millionaires and billionaires kill themselves? Praise God. My goodness. Folks, this is apostolic. Yes, sir. You know, we shout about fun stuff. I'm apostolic because I'm, uh, you know, I know that Jesus is, is, uh, is God in the flesh. I'm apostolic because I believe Acts 2.38. I'm apostolic because I live holy, dress holy, talk holy. I'm apostolic because I got the Holy Ghost. Uh, you know, I get all that. That's wonderful, awesome. But you know what else is apostolic? Having peace. Right. Because what good is all of that stuff if you don't have peace? If you don't have confidence in your God, that no matter what the weapon is, you're going to come out on top. Because no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Now the question is this, is that a passage that we believe or just quote? Hello? No, no, really, seriously. Is that a passage that we actually believe and live by? Or is it just some... Uh, uh, well-known passage in scripture that we love to quote. When the preacher starts to quote it, everybody goes to quoting it too. Why? Because it sounds so good. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And everybody goes buck wild, but nobody's living by it. 
I'm just trying to help us because this is the heart. This, this, this is this. Listen, this is the heart. This is the heart of, a, of, of, of at least this pastor. I can't speak for everybody else. And there's some wonderful, wonderful brethren all around the world. Wonderful men of God, wonderful leaders, whatever. But I can only speak for myself. This is my heart. I love the apostolic message. But you know what? You know what fuels the apostolic message? Apostolic peace. Because when we have apostolic peace, nothing shall offend us. In fact, the scripture says, great peace have they that love thy law and nothing shall offend them. You know what that word offense means in that passage? It doesn't mean somebody made fun of you and now you're offended. It could mean that, but that's not the depth of the, of, of the passage. It means this. Great peace have they that love thy law and nothing shall offend them. It means nothing shall stir, uh, push them off course. That's what it means. So just like that ship that the disciples were on and it was being pushed off course by the winds and the storms and the rains, that's what that passage means. You have great peace when nothing shall offend you. You can know somebody with great peace when things don't push them off the course. Praise God. The Apostle Paul made note of this when he said, I fight as one, uh, he, I don't fight as one that just beateth the air. He, 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 gives, he gives the understanding that when I fight, I'm making contact. I'm making contact. Praise God. Amen. And, and, you know, I think sometimes we don't make contact because I'm beating this dead horse, aren't I? Because we don't have peace. And we're trying to get peace by our own methods, but there's only one that can give you lasting peace. Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. He said the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You know that's a progression. First comes righteousness. You need to be made right by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ right. and get on the right path. Then when you get on the right path, here's what the right path produces. It produces peace. When you know you're on the right path, when you know you're right with God, when you know you're doing his will, it produces peace. And then that peace brings about the next progression, joy. Somebody shout joy. joy. Come on, shout it again. Joy. joy. In fact, the scripture says, in his presence, hallelujah, there's fullness of joy. Yes. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Praise God. Come on, I minister peace to you today. Yes. That this, this is how we're going to truly be his representatives. Yes. When we know that what we're trying to share with our world, we have, it makes it much more. Not only does it make it easier to share it, it makes it more exciting because I get to share with people what I really have. I can't give somebody $10 if I ain't got $10. Right, right, that's right. But if I know I got enough $10 to give it out. <laughs> but the problem is, we don't have that $10, do we? Right. Many of us, even some of us watching online today, we don't really have that $10, do we? And by that $10, it's a metaphor for peace, okay? We don't really, we don't really, we're not really grabbing a hold of it. You know, we come here and we, and we, you know, we, we're very peaceful and we dress real nice and we say, you know, praise the Lord, brother, praise the Lord, sister, I love you, praise God, all this wonderful stuff. But when we go home, it's like a war zone in our minds, in our spirits. And even when we come here, it's a war zone up there. We're just trying, doing our best to make sure nobody notices. <laughs> Praise God. Man, let me read another passage of scripture really quick here. Uh, um, Mark chapter number two. 
Mark chapter number 2, verse number 17. And I'm bringing this in for a landing, okay? It says this, When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician. But they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Here's what he's saying. I can't help those who won't admit that they are sick. Jesus cannot help anybody that won't confess that they are in need. No, what most of us do is we behave as if everything's okay. And we continue to live with hurts and wounds and problems and heartaches and pains and all this stuff because simply we cannot humble ourselves enough to say, Jesus, I'm sick. Heal me. My own antidotes have not worked. My own medicines have not worked. My own processes have not worked. My ability to critically think about it and come up with a solution has not worked. Jesus, I'm sick. I need the great physician. I'm sick. And I don't care how much I get to know about Jesus. I don't care how deep my relationship is with, with Jesus. I, this preacher, listen to me, this preacher will never reach a place where I say to God, I'm good. I'm, I'm good? It, 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 it's him that worketh in me both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It's him. Everything I will, everything I think, everything I do, it's because he allows me to do it. And then I have the nerve to sit up here and say, Lord, I'm good. You can, you can work on their lives because they got problems. That's what some of us do in church. We hear the message and we're thinking about sister so-and-so. Oh, Lord, let her hear this message today. No, I'm sick. I'm sick. But you know what? I'd rather be sick and have Jesus heal me than to think I'm whole and to stay sick. Some people say, well, I, I, I don't want to admit that I'm sick or I got problems because, you know, uh, you know, you know that'll, that'll be awkward or people might look at me funny or well, whatever. But let me tell you something today. I would rather be sick so that Jesus can heal me than to behave as if I'm whole but yet remain sick. Yeah. Can, you, can you see the dilemma there? Can you see how one is a better option than the other? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me say this. We must believe that he will go with us. Even when it is scary, even when we feel vulnerable, even when it seems that the sin of our world and the problems in our life is as great as the ocean wide and deep. Let me reveal to you something. One intercessor, one person that can humble themselves and seek the face of God, one willing person that will go can impact more of that ocean of sin than we think. Praise God. Just one. Just one. In fact, God told Ezekiel one time, he said, the situation continues the way that it is because I looked for an intercessor and I could not find one. Can you believe the multiplied millions of people that were on the earth at that time and God could not find one that would intercede for the nation? One. 
and all he said was it all it all it would have taken was one all it would have taken was one and he couldn't even find one willing consistent intercessor that seeks the lord and says god uh the solutions of man in working we need you and god has bound himself God has bound himself. I want you to remember this. Every day you wake up, I want you to remember this because this brings a, such, a, such a high level of importance to your existence and to your prayer. Uh, God has bound himself that he cannot and will not work in the earth if people are not praying and interceding. He has bound himself to work through you and I. That puts such a level of weightiness and importance on our day-to-day -day walk with God. Because he couldn't find an intercessor. Praise God. If we persuade, to draw as many as possible to the new birth plan, that is the antidote to tr transform our world. Praise the Lord. And I said this before, and I'll end with the same words. We cannot, as the church, continue to put band-aids on internal bleeding. In Jesus' name. I wonder if everyone here and everyone watching online, let's stand together. We're going to make an altar right now. God bless you. <laughs> We're going to make an altar right now. And this is a moment of, 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 of solidarity. When, when we want to be united in this effort right here. Praise God. And here's, here's what I want us to do. If you can just to shake up the routine a little bit. Can you step out into the aisle or move into a different position? Just shake up the comfort zone a little bit. And let's begin to talk to the Lord here and, and seek after the peace giver. Every one of us under the sound of my voice, I know without a shadow of a doubt, there is something that you are worrying about. There is something that you are letting your mind constantly run on day after day. And I'm here to declare to the devil trying to distract. There is a peace giver and, and his name is Jesus Christ. And if we'll let him, listen to me, if we'll let him, he will instantaneously give you and I the peace we need. But we must surrender to that and yield to that and receive it. Lift our hands. Come on, let's do it. Lift your hands and lift your voice higher than your hands. Hallelujah. Come on, don't, don't just let this be another message. Don't just let this be another message. This might be the most important message the church is hearing in this hour. We need peace. Hallelujah. We need peace. Peace. Praise God. We need to, 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 to get on a different course. A course that isn't filled with so much carnality. But we need to go down the course that leads to peace. And it is in his presence. That's where the peace is. Okay. Ye do re de moko re be de le mo sanda la bahaya. Uko tapu rubu kondo robo shanda. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Say, Jesus, I'm sick. Come on. Jesus, I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. It's not him. It's not her. It's not my husband. It's not my wife. I'm sick. I'm in the need of prayer. I'm in the need of you transforming something in my mind, something in my spirit. Come on. Come on. 
we can be open and honest before the Lord. Yeah. 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 Come on, online viewers. You can be open and honest before the Lord. Come on, let the wind of the Holy Ghost flow right now. Let the wind of the Holy Ghost and power flow right now. In the Namato Come on, it's going to be all right. Hallelujah. It's going to be all right. Come on, it's going to be all right. Come on, joy cometh in the morning. It's going to be all right, I say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I speak it over you. I speak it over you. Come on, I speak it over you, Sister Madonna. I speak it over you, Brother Manny. I speak it over you, Sister Jen. I speak it over our children. I speak it into the camera. I speak it onto the airwaves. I speak peace. I speak blessed assurance. I speak solidarity and unity in Jesus Christ. I speak righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands and receive it. Come on, lift your hands and receive it. Oh. Come on, everything doesn't have to go our way, the way we think it ought to go, for everything to really be all right. Jesus said it's all right, so it's all right. Come on, I know the storms are raging, I know the winds are blowing, I know the waters are heavy. Come on, I know the storm looks insurmountable. Praise God, but let Jesus come out from under the boat. Come on, let him ha allow him to wake up and come and and say peace be still peace be still peace be still there's an old song that says i know the peace speaker yes i know him by name when he says peace be still they have to obey hallelujah the winds and the rains have to obey i'm telling you i'm speaking to this small group in person here today come on i'm telling you come on i know we all know each other pretty well in this place but I'm telling you, there is peace. I know there's family members in this place. But I'm telling you, there is peace available. There's stuff you're not telling any one of us. And you don't have to tell us. But I implore you, would you be open and honest with Jesus? God wants us uh, to focus uh, on the kingdom, but we can't do that if we don't have peace with our circumstances and our world. Come on, we, we cannot do it. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, somebody. It don't have to be over just because just because I'm not saying anything. Come on. You know what you know what you're going through in your